my background as, as a singer-songwriter. I used to be a t touring artist, and then I had three children, and I realized that staying out late and touring all the time wasn't something I could easily do with three kids. So I started to look into sync licensing. I was just very curious how to get my own songs placed in TV and film. And I kind of flew out to LA and learned about some different um, online classes that I took. And I discovered that my songs were really hard to get placed on TV and film, even though they were really good. It's not like the recording quality was, you know, it was top notch when I went to a professional studio, but um, I love lyrics and so my stories were very specific. I mean, you know, and it just, when I started to really listen to what was being placed in TV and film and ads, I realized that, um, you know, writing very specific lyrics would not, was not gonna be helpful. So I just started to do that. I started to listen more. And, and then I took a step back and I started creating all new songs. But I brought my own authenticity still to that, but I sort of crafted them in a different way. So I, I knew that like I needed to have build, I needed to have different editing points, and I needed to have very clear lyrics in the chorus. And there's just all these things that I learned that have, that have helped. Um, and then I also started just co-writing a lot, which is something I never did before. I was just always the singer writing my own you know, folk rock songs that told my stories or stories I wanted to share. But once I started to, um, to co-write, it actually opened up, oh, oh, thank you. Okay, it opened up a lot of doors for me in a lot of different ways. Um, in some ways, it was because my voice wasn't always the right voice. And I had to take a step back and, and really think about that and realize that. Um, I have this one song that was actually the very first placement that I ever got um, called Gimme More, and it was placed on a Sephora ad. And I wrote it, um, and I was singing the song an initially, but then I, I had this other artist named Brittany Fance who I knew was amazing. She had this cool, edgy voice. And the producer was like, he was just honest with me. He said, I know you can sing this, but she can s give it that edge that you can't give it. <laughs> and it's true. And so I was like, okay, let's have her sing it. So we just hired her as a work for hire. Um, and then that song has, has gotten, it just got another big placement last week. It's got like a promo. It's gotten placed four times. Um, it could not have gotten that with me. I just know it. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm just excited because it's something that still, I, I wrote the song, you know, and I'm, it's, it's, it just goes to show that, you know, you can look at what you can offer and, and, and just do it in different ways. Like I'm able to be a songwriter and be proud of that. And I'm still able to be a singer and, and perform and do my own artist stuff and be, you know, excited about that too. So it's sort of finding those different avenues and, and what different places that you can dive into. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'll just uh, go into this, this thing I got here. So how many of you have, let me start with this question. How many of you have actually placed your music in TV film and know about sync licensing already? Please raise your hand. Okay. All right, so anyone else who's in here who's an artist, please look around. Keep your hands up. Psychosis. Keep your hands up. <laughs> look around these people. So make sure you talk to them, okay, because they know about this. And that's another thing about when I started co-writing. That's how I got into the world. I, I co-wrote with people. I would go to events, and I would pay attention to who got placements, and then I would go up and talk to them afterwards and say, hey, do you want to write a song with me? And then I'd write a song with them, and then I would get my in to that sync licensing agent. That's how I did it. And then I go right with tons of people. And then I was connected with, um, connected myself with a bunch of different sync licensing agencies. Um, yeah. And it was funny. Those, the person who got me the Sephora ad, she was on a panel. I was at an event. I remember uh, raising my hand and saying, how would I potentially, like, get my music in with you? And I forget her exact answer, but it was basically like, you can't. It was so negative. <laughs> like, okay. And then... Um, and then I just was persistent, and then I just like kept reaching out, and I don't know. I'd eventually, she's the one who got me the placement. So I, that's another little tidbit. Don't just don't take no for an answer. Just keep being nice, nicely persistent. Anyway, uh, music synchronization to picture equals, I mean, potentially and hopefully equals money. Um, benefits. It can definitely grow your fan base. We got this girl a placement on Lucifer. She was 16 years old. And we got her her first placement ever on the show Lucifer a few years ago. And then it got 
so many, you know, listens on Spotify and all these followers, and we were so excited for her. Um, yeah, so this is just a little bit about new collaborators, um, all this stuff that's great. Um, okay, so lyrics, themes, this is something when I was saying to really listen to what's actually being used, and these were things that we noticed were being used a lot. Um, just feel good songs, the, the topic of home, you know, let's go, new day, togetherness, hero, being a boss, just... So if you want to, to start to write with sync in mind, and I don't say write for sync, but just to be your authentic self, but to write with sync in mind, you know, the potential of getting placements, then these are um, good themes to keep in mind. Um, so I don't know if we'll, if I'll play this or not. We could play maybe just the end of it, if you could just skip to the end, yeah. <laughs> The Medical Commission has decided to postpone Dr. Gray's hearing. Most likely, an entirely new hearing will take place based on today's events. You can't postpone. Uh, Dr. Karev, we're not exactly holding a town hall. Can you please find a seat? No, you can't postpone because these people have come from all over to speak for Meredith. I I'm sorry, what people? No idea. You're going to tell them all they need to go home? To keep you safe. All right. Yeah, it's it's powerful and the reason it's a powerful scene is because of the music right um, and so this is Lindsay Ray's song that was selected for that scene in Grey's Anatomy and we just want to point out that you probably noticed let's see check out the dynamics production elements lyrics and pay attention to what the editor used for for the well I don't know why we wrote ad but it, anyways she was also used in ads but for that particular scene um, it's, it really builds, right? Like she's got this intro that's really quiet and then she's got that end tag that's very up close and quiet, but then it builds a lot. And that's so important. And so when we receive submissions, that's exactly what we look for. We look for, will it go somewhere? And if it never goes anywhere, it's really hard for us to pitch a song. So, um, I don't know. Uh, you can play a little bit of it, yeah. It's just the original that they edited from. If you ever lose your way And everything is out of place and Just skip to the I'll end. I'll be so there to make But just to give you the idea, like it really went somewhere, right? It went, it went big, and so that was um, really helpful for the editors in that. Um, cool. All right. Oops, I didn't go. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Go back. All right. So production: how a song's production can make it more syncable. Um, I just want you to look at the wave file here. Y'all see that? We look for that. So when we get our tracks and we look at them, we look at, is it going to change? And you can, you can see it in the track itself, right? It gets small in the middle. So I'll click around, and I'll know where to jump to. And, uh, and if it all looks the same, then I kind of know that it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so create builds and changes so that the editor has options. Make sure the instrumental stands on its own. Too many lyrics can get in the way of dialogue. Um, this was... Yeah, <laughs> who just clapped? <laughs> a music supervisor. <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, so too many lyrics, and this is what was my problem when I first started doing it, is I love lyrics, I love a good story. Um, but what I learned to do is to keep those lyrics in your verses, tell your story there, and then when you get to your hook, really make it a concise, clear hook. That's, um, and you can use vocalese and oohs and good, fun stuff like that. But you have to remember that the picture is the most important thing. What the music is doing is just supporting that picture. Um, must be high quality recordings, not demos. Um, okay, I'm going to skip this. This is just an, it's an old song that was used for Apple. It was a great example, just because it had a lot of editing points and cool, um, cool stuff in it. Split sheet example. So, yeah, nitty gritty. Uh, this green is hard to read, I'm sorry. But um, make clean and sample free versions. So if you do have curse words in your song, I highly recommend not just bleeping them out, but actually just write a different lyric if you can. Yeah, and uh, it's just cooler than us submitting songs with bleep, 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 bleep. So <laughs> if you can do that, it's better. Uh, okay, and then sam uh, sample free, yeah, we know samples that we can't clear. Um, get instrumentals, okay, that was my problem. I couldn't pitch any of my first few albums because I didn't think to ask my producers to bounce instrumentals. Um, so make sure you have those and have a mastered at the same level as your main track. Um, and you'll also need vocals and other stems from your producer. So just make sure if you're an artist, you get this stuff, you know, before you say goodbye to your producer with your album. Uh, register with a performing rights organization. Raise your hand if you're an artist and you're re you are registered. Okay, great. So yeah, so if you're not, then maybe talk to one of them and you can learn more about it, but it's just, there's BMI and ASCAP are the two of the main ones in the United States. Um, split sheet, okay, so when we have um, work with somebody, we ask them, can, you, can this be one stop? Can you be the one person that we contact and can clear off on this song? And so we ask that they have a split sheet signed with their other co-writers or producers or anyone else who is working with them, who wrote that song with them, or that they had work for hire contract signed so that it's all in place and that we know that we can just contact them and be like, hey, we got you this placement. So, and um, yeah, oh, put your contact information in the metadata. So there's metadata embedded in every song and you can put your contact information there and that's very important. That way, like if you send us a song or someone else a song, um, we can contact you if we need to. Say it was a few years ago and we look back in our emails, we'll find it and be like, oh, hey, we're going to place your song. Um, okay, so this is just um, when you're going to send your songs to people. Ask your peers for feedback to see if your music is ready. There's lots of sync communities out there. Um, learn about publishing deals versus administration deals. And this is all. There's so much research, and there's people you can talk to here about, about this. Uh, understand the difference between exclusive versus non-exclusive deals. Um, yeah, that's just... Uh, there's a lot of different deals and options out there. I'd say just be careful in terms of what you're signing, that it's not forever and ever and a day and that it's a bad deal, right? So there are, there's a lot of bad deals, there's a lot of great deals. It's just um, talking to others and learning what makes sense for you. It's not like, I can't clearly say only do non-exclusive or only do exclusive because it really does depend on, on the situation and who you're working with and stuff. Um, Okay, and then music supervisors um, research their work, current and previous. Go to conferences. Um, it, the fact that you're here, that you're showing up here is really a big deal. I mean, when, you, when we meet people in person, it's like I'm going to, if anybody who's here today wants to send us music, you can get my email from my business card on our table out in the hall, and you can send us a link um, to check out. Just make sure it's not an attachment. Please do not send us an MP3, or Pepe will blacklist you forever. So, yes, <laughs> only send streamable links. Um, okay, uh, there's conferences. We put together a conference every year in Chicago. It's going to be June, probably June 7th. So just follow us on Instagram and other places and then stay in the loop for that. It's called Whoop It Up. But there's other great ones to go to. Um, yeah, Google's your best friend. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. Okay, I am <laughs> Okay. Um, 
Tune Find. Yeah, so these are other great things. If you don't know about IMDb or Tune Find or iSpot TV, then write these down and check them out later. They're a lot of fun. Like, I have a blast on these. <laughs> I'll go to Tune Find and, ooh, I went on the other day. I went on Tune Find and put in Love is Blind because I wanted to check out if they put my songs on there because I got some songs on Love is Blind. And uh, if you go to season four, the first, uh, first episode, that first song, Live This Life, I read that. Um, so it's fun. It's just basically you put in shows and you can hear the music that's been used on those shows. So that's really useful for us as a sync licensing agency because what we do is we research what was used in the past and then we know if we're going to reach out to somebody that that's the sound. I go to the very last episode to see like what's most recent um, and then we see you know, that's probably the sound that they're looking for and then we'll try to find songs that fit um, that. And IMDB is just all about what uh, yeah, people are doing. Um, okay, so most common mistakes. Sending an impersonal long email. Don't copy, paste. Send a straight to the point short email showing you've done your research. They don't need your full bio. Just send, you know, little uh, one to three song of your best songs and tell them how they would be good for their show brand film. So metadata, make sure to add your contact information at the very least or they'll never find you. Um, there's a lot more to it. Uh, we have a free metadata video if you need more information. You can email us about that. And, oh, we have this metadata template too. So if you want that, just email us. I'll get it to you. And most, did I already do this one? Most common mistakes. Oh, attaching your songs. Always send a streamable link that does not expire. That's so important. I, there's times I'll go through my email and look for songs from before. I'm like, oh, shoot, we need a yodeling song. And I'll be like, ah, someone sent us a yodeling song last year. So I'll go through and Google yodeling and then, you know, but if that link is expired, then that stinks. So, yeah, so we love Real Crafter. We love Disco. You can also use Box.com. That's free if you get an individual account. And uh, follow up with new songs. So always be polite. Don't ask, hey, did you listen to those songs yet? Just send us some new ones, right? If we haven't gotten back to you, just follow up with a nice email and say, I hope you're doing well. Here are some new tracks. And um, hope you have a great day. All right. Oh, yeah, conclusion. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. I've definitely learned this. Be in it for the long game. I mean, you're doing this because it's something you are, are already going to be doing because you're passionate about it. You'd love to do it. So just keep doing it, but in a smarter and smart way. And be willing to take feedback and improve, um, for sure. The more songs you have, the better your chances. They're like your lottery tickets. So just keep writing new songs. I always think that. I'm like, God, I know my best songs are in front of me. So I just got to keep writing till I get there, till I get to that hit, you know? Um, join our, and then we have a Facebook group if you guys are on Facebook, um, or follow us on other things. And that's it. I think, I think that's all I had. Yeah, that's it.